ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जायत नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिके जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कदात्र शिवा शादी गोर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो फोर चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स्ट थर्टी टू टू फोर्टी वन so canto 4 the creation of of the fourth order and uh, chapter 7 sacrifice the sacrifice performed by daksha text uh sorry text 32 okay to 41 Thanks, Rajit. Do you want me to share the screen? Ah, uh, yes, you can share the screen, Mother. Yeah, sure, Mother. I'll share. Share it if you like. Oh, Prabhuji, do you want to share? Yes, Mother. Okay, okay. Thank you. Six, six thirty-two. In verse, my dear Lord. your transcendental form with eight hands and weapons is in each of them appears for the welfare of the entire universe and it is very pleasing to the mind and eyes in in such a form your lordship is always prepared to punish the demons who are envious of your devotees text 33 the wives of the performers of the sacrifice said my dear lord this sacrifice was arranged under the instruction of brahma but unfortunately lord shiva being angry at daksha devastated the entire scene and because of his anger the animals meant for sacrifice are lying dead therefore the preparation of the yagna have been lost now by the glance of your lotus eyes the sanctity of the of this sacrifice sacrificial arena may be again invoked text 34 the sages prayed dear lord your uh, activities are most wonderful and although you do everything by your different potencies you are not all you are not at all at all attachment to such activities you are not even attached to the goddess of fortune who is worshiped by the great demigods like brahma who pray to achieve her mercy text 35 the siddhas prayed like an elephant has that has suffered in a forest fire but can forget all its trouble by entering a river our minds o lords are of always march in in the nectarian river of your transcendental past times and they desire never to leave such transcendental bliss which is as good as the pleasure of marching in the absolute text 36 the wife of daksha prayed as follows 
my dear oh my dear lord it is very fortunate that you have appeared in this arena of sacrifice i offer my respectful obeisances unto you and i request that you be pleased on this occasion the sacrificial sacrificial arena is not beautiful without you it's, uh, just as a body is not beautiful without the head text 37 the governors of various planets spoke as follows dear lord we believe only in our direct perception and therefore we see you as a creation of the material world but under the circumstances we do not know whether we have actually seen you with your material senses by our material senses we can simply perceive the cosmic manifestation but you are beyond the five elements you are the sixth text 38 the great mystics said dear lord persons who see you as non-different from themselves knowing that you are the super soul of all living entities are certainly very very dear to you you are very favorable toward those who engage in devotional service accept, uh, accepting you as the lord and themselves as the servants by your mercy you are always inclined in their favor text 39 we offer our respectful obeisances unto the supreme who has created varieties of manifestations and put them under the spell of the three qualities of the material world in order to create man maintain and annihilate them he himself is not under the control of the external energy in his personal feature he is completely devoid of the variegated manifestation of material qualities and he is under no illusion of false identification text 40 the person I, the personified veda said we offer our respectful obeisances unto you o the lord the the shelter of the quality of god goodness and therefore the source of all religion austerity and penance for you for you are transcendental to all material qualities and no one knows you or your actual situation text 41 the fire god said my dear lord i offer my respectful obeisances unto you because by your favor i am as luminous as blazing fire and i accept the offerings mixed with butter and offered in sacrifice the five kinds of offerings according to you according to your veda are all your different energies and you are worshipped by five kinds of Vedic hymns. Sacrifice means you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Dear Prabhuji and Mataji, all is over to you. Thank you so much, Mataji, for reading. Uh, Chaitanya Chandra Prabhuji, whenever you are ready, please take over the call, Prabhuji. Sure. Thank you, Parampravati Mataji, for reading our wonderful translations. Thank you, dear devotees, for giving me this opportunity to share something from Srimad Bhagavatam today. Um, so for my own purification and for pleasure of all assembled Vaishnavas, um, I'll, I'll discuss something from uh, Canto 4, Chapter 7. I'll start by offering my prayers. 
ओम क्यांत निरंधस्यानाशाला चक्षुर उन्मृत तस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णु पदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिदेशणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा श्रीवासादी गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरी यत्र पातम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारणम Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So we are reading. Um, I'll just give you a brief overview of what we've discussed so far. So in uh, Canto Four, um, and Chapter Seven, we are discussing the wonderful sacrifice that was arranged by uh, Daksha Prajapati. Prior to this, we had seen everything that had happened: the offense to to Lord Shiva, Mother Sati giving up her her, her body, um, and then the the retaliation by um, you know by the Followers of Lord Shiva and the and you know, just breaking down of the sacrifice and then finally after all the demigods went and appeased Lord Shiva, um, he uh, forgives all of them and the sacrifice resumes with Dutch Prajapati assuming the goat head. And as the sacrifice continues from here onwards, now that auspiciousness has been restored, Lord Vishnu, uh, he presents himself at the sacrificial arena and once he arrives, seeing the supreme personality of Godhead. All the wonderful personalities are one after one after another taking turns and offering their wonderful glorifications of the Supreme Lord. So, in this particular one, uh, shloka, we see that um, now Indra Deva, Devta is speaking. So, uh, Indra Devta is a very in interesting and unique personality in our scriptures. Um, you know, at least whenever whenever I read about Indra Devta earlier. You know, we read about so many sort of offenses uh, he commits to great, to great devotees like his his uh, his teacher uh, Brihaspati, then to Durvasha Muni. Then we learn about how he he again is pride, um, and then we hear about the Govardhan Leela. Then we we hear also about so many negative connotations related to Indra Dev that I used to often wonder at one point that why is he even the king of the of the demigods? You know. Um, but then in one lecture I'd, I'd heard recently that actually it's, it's not our position to understand or misunderstand um, Indra Devta because uh, he he is a wonderful devotee and the Lord uses him as an example to tell us uh, all the deficiencies that are present in us. So when we read about Indra Devta and, and all the leaders associated with him, we, we may sometimes think, oh, such, such and such a thing is happening with him. But actually, all those negative qualities are within us, but it is being depicted through Indra Dev. So this wonderful personality, wonderful devotee, Indra Devta, um, he's praying to the Lord that, Lord, uh, you have descended here with eight hands and weapons in each of them. Prabhupada then goes on to describe in the purport, because normally when we see the description of Lord Vishnu, he's always with four hands. Shanka Chakra Gada Padmadhari. He he holds his four four items in his four hands. Um, so it's usually not mentioned eight hand form. The Prabhupada mentions that for Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no limitation. And he can appear in whatever form he likes to appear. I remember uh, Srila Prabhupada used to quote and say his tell that his father, Gaur Mohande, used to say that uh, you know, God has ten hands. Uh, if God wants to take away something from you, what can you do? And if God wants to give something from you with those ten hands, how much can you take? That is the unlimited mercy that we can get from the Lord. So, this is the description of um, in the Devta praise, how Lord Vishnu manifested there with eight hands. In the next shloka, text 33, now the wives of the performers of the sacrifice are praying. So, the, the, the devotees, the brahmanas who are offering the yajna, now their wives are praying and they are very compassionate. They're, they're looking at the ghastly scene that has been created at the sacrificial arena. Usually when a sacrifice is going on, there's usually auspiciousness. There's so like a wonderful festival going on. 
But now just recently where this, you know, this almost like a warfare happened and there was so much retaliation and fighting and all the different animals that were there for the sacrifice were killed. Prabhupada goes on to describe in the purport that you know, the reason that the animals sacrificed was to show the power of the chanting of the mantras that the brahmanas were used, were, were, were invoking. And through that power of the mantras, they would give a new life to those animals. So those animals, you know, were all now laying dead in the sacrificial arena. So they were very compassionately praying to, to Lord Vishnu that please, by the glance of your lotus eyes, please bring them back to life and restore the sanctity of the sacrificial arena and all the auspiciousness associated with it. In text 34, now the sages who are praying. So, the, um, so they pray that, Lord, your activities are most wonderful and although you do everything by your different potencies, you are not at all attached to such activities. The Prabhupada quotes in Bhagavad Gita 4.14, Na maam karma nilimpanti, na me karma phalas priha. That Lord says that even though I partake in such activities, I have no responsibility to do them. There's, there, is, there is no need for the Lord to do them. So just because to set an example for the common people and to show the world and to attract you know, his devotees by his wonderful leelas, the, the Lord comes and performs such activities. Um, I remember when... Um, one of the German scholars who was a disciple of uh, his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, you know, when he when he approached um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur for initiation, you know, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur asked him, you know, how come you're so convinced that Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead? You have not even, you know, explored or read in detail the Vedas. Um, and he described that, that you know, Guru, Guru Maharaj, that I've, I've traveled all over India and I've seen so many pictures of so many forms of like demigods and all, and everybody is busy doing something. Um, you no, know, Mother Durga is, is killing somebody with a trident. Lord Shiva in the form of Tripura, Tripurari is you know, running behind some other demon. Kartike is fighting a battle with somebody else. So everybody is engaged in some sort of work or, or one, one way or the another. But there's just one personality I see who's just standing. Every time I see his picture, he's just standing and just enjoying playing his flute uh, and enjoying with his Wonderful friends, gopas and uh, gopis. Um, so this person must be must be the boss because usually he says uh, that the boss has a big desk and no papers on his desk. But whereas the other people who are working in the office usually they'll have small desk and a big pile of papers on their desk. So he realized when he saw the Krishna is just enjoying that that he is not performing any activities, but he is the enjoyer of all activities and he he must be supreme personality. In the second part of the translation, uh, it said that he is not even attached to the goddess of fortune, who is worshipped by all the great demigods. Prabhupada describes in the purport that in the Vaikuntha Loka, there are so many thousands of forms of Mother Lakshmi who are offering service to, uh, to Lord Vishnu, but he still does not remain uh, attached. Next 35. Now we move on to the Siddhas. So the Siddhas are uh, yogis who have achieved the Ashta Siddhis, the eight wonderful uh, sort of qualities that they've achieved through the yogic process. Examples being like Anima Siddhi, Lagima Siddhi, and there are six other to, to define. And Prabhupada says that it appears in the purport he mentions that these the Siddhas were also pure devotees, that because they realize that after achieving and after going through so many tribulations to achieve all these Siddhis, they have realized that ultimately, um, in this translation, it is said, um, one can forget all troubles by entering a river, our minds alone, always merging the nectarian river of your transcendental pastimes. So when one hears the transcendent past, transcendental pastimes of the Lord, that is the only way one can be liberated from this material existence. Um, so in, in we pray, uh, you know, um, every day in the morning, samsara dava and lalali dhiloka. So this world is compared to like a forest fire. There is this great forest fire. And the only solution to that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stays in the first verse of the Shushashtrakam. Keto darpana majanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam. Um, so the way to control is davagni. This, this material misery of fire is to chant the holy names of the Lord. And when one does that by associating in the, in the company of devotees, 
and hearing the nectarian pastimes, we can achieve transcendental bliss. In the purple Prabhupada also quotes uh, Prahlad Maharaj. And he says, Prahlad Maharaj has also confirmed this, this point. When I um, was, was in, a, in, a, in one of the Back to Godhead magazines, I had seen this wonderful picture from this from the Narsingha Leela, where uh, it, says, it shows Prahlad Maharaj is sitting in the center uh, in that painting by the devotee. And he's sitting in a very calm and peaceful smile in his face. And around him, you know, the demons are trying to uh, approach him with a trident. The snakes are trying to bite him. The elephant is coming from behind. And he's surrounded by all miseries, but he's sitting in such a peaceful, tranquil position. And I used to wonder that, you know, like if I was in that position, I'd probably be scrambling around trying to, you know, fight off all those miseries by my own, by my own strength. But in that particular position, we realize from, from Prahlad Maharaj that oftentimes in life, we will focus on the problems and we can have n number of problems. You know, we, we don't even need to give examples in our, in our material life. But the key part is instead of focusing on the problems, we should focus on the solution like Prahlad Maharaj was doing. And the solution that's described in this translation is, is engaging in the nectarian pastimes of the Lord. In text 36, now the wife of Daksha, whose mother Prasuti, now she prays that um, mother, mother Prasuti addresses Lord as Yajeshwara. Yajeshwara, he's, he's also known as Yajya. Of the, of the wonderful names of the Lord, one of them is Yajya because he is the beneficial of all sacrifice. And Prabhupada goes on to describe that um, Mother Prasuti wanted the Lord to be pleased and um, this our success in life in whatever we do can be achieved by seeing the smiling face of the Lord. So whatever we do, you know, we may have big, big accomplishments and all, but our goal in life should be to, to see the smiling face of the Lord and then our success will be achieved. But the Prasuti prays like this to Lord Vishnu that please be pleased uh, on this wonderful occasion of this sacrifice. In the second part, it is said that the sacrificial arena is not beautiful without you, just as the beauty is not, body is not beautiful without the head. So oftentimes, you know, uh, in, in this example, when I think of, and I realize that um, there's, there's this phrase in, in English, which says like running around like a headless chicken. Um, so uh, a lot of times we see, especially in the Western world, um, there, there's, there's so much material and scientific prowess uh, that there are so much comforts, um, so many facilities available, but it just seems like society, even here, is running around you know, without a head. Um, there are so many problems that, that are there in the world. Everybody in the world wants to come to America uh, because they think that there are so much um, material comforts here. But we see that America itself, is the society itself, is plagued by problems related to you know, violence, gun violence, um, racial discrimination, um, as well as uh, drugs, you know, being in the medical field, I've had first-hand experience with this. And that often makes me wonder that what is the point of having all, you know, all these material qualifications if we cannot have peace of mind? Prabhupada used to say that, um, you know, that Krishna consciousness is so simple that you will just miss it. And you know, I feel that that is the point, that even uh, you know, we have achieved such wonderful material uh, and scientific achievements uh, we're running around like a headless society. There's an example given by uh, one of Radha Shyam Prabhu's books that how you know the, we can rectify the situation because when we come from the east, you know we are endowed with a lot of um, you know the knowledge of the Vedas and Shastras and Bhagavad Gita by hearing about these stories from birth. And when it's like a like a person who's blind, um, you know, and, and a person who's strong, if they work together they can both achieve success. So we can use that knowledge as well as the material advancements that are available here to serve Krishna in the best possible way. In text 37, now the Lokpals, the, the governors of the various planets are speaking and they describe in the translation in purple Prabhupada says that, that Lord, it is very difficult to understand you uh, by through our material senses. And Prabhupada here quotes a uh, the prayers of Kunti, uh, Queen Kunti uh, from uh, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text 26, and says Queen Kunti describes that uh, Lord is Lord is uh, described as a kinchana gocharam. That means he is not, he's understood by people who are 
in a very materially humble position, but not who are in a puffed up position. That is the right way to understand and approach the Supreme Prasadi. Now in text 38, the great mystics who are present in the sacrifice, they are praying. And when they pray, they, they mention that, that uh, Lord, you are non-different from themselves. So Prabhupada describes when these yogis are mentioning that Lord is non-different from themselves, it does not mean that we are one and same with the Lord uh, in all aspects. It only mentions um, that we, we are one with the Lord in quality, but not in quantity. Um, in the re remaining part of the purport, Prabhupada goes on to describe that, like in the last verse, uh, it says, by your mercy, you are always inclined in their favor. That uh, there are very different ways to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead through Jnana, Karma, Hatha Yoga, and finally Bhakti Yoga. Out of all of them, the supreme uh, supreme path is Bhakti Yoga. Because um, Lord, in the, in the last part of this text, is described, Ananya Vritaya Nugrehana Vatsala. So Lord is described as Bhakta Vatsala. He is never described as Jnani Vatsala, Karma, Karma Yogi Vatsala. He is always described as Bhakta Vatsala. So of all the different processes in which we can understand Supreme Personality of Godhead, the one that is um, the best process is the process of bhakti. In text 39, the mystics continue to offer their prayers and they describe, and Prabhupada says in the purport that there are two situations that are described in here. One is about the qualities that exist in the material world and the second is about qualities that exist in the spiritual world. Um, some philosophers say that when the Lord descends um, to the material world, you know, he is originally formless, but he takes to this particular form when he comes into this material world. And the reason for that is you know, they, they see the Lord through their own eyes and through their own limited understanding. They, they, they think since we have a material form, which is temporary and, and gets, you know, we have to leave our body after a certain time, they, they cast this image on, on, on Lord's form as well and state that Lord's form is also temporary, but originally he is formless. Um, this in when I was listening to a lecture by Bhakti Bhakti Samit Maharaj, he describes that this is like the Ghatakash and Patakash philosophy of Mayavad. They describe that this this world, this universe or the sky is formless, and sometimes what will happen is the sky when you, when you when there's a pot and there's a pot there is air in it. Temporarily, it takes the form of the pot because the air is now in it and it is limited because of it. But if the pot breaks then the air mixes with everything and becomes one. That is the Ghatakash, Patakash philosophy. But we have to understand that the Lord is both formless in his Brahman Swarup, but the Lord also has a form as his, as his own Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagwan Swarup. And that is the original, the source of all the other forms and energies. In um, text 40, it's described the personified Vedas are now prayed. And in their prayer, they describe that Lord is Nirguna. Again, the same thing is mentioned that Prabhupada describes in purport. Nirguna does not mean that he doesn't have any qualities. It just means that he doesn't have any material qualities. In the second part of the translation, uh, it's described that the mode of goodness uh, who's uh, in charge is Lord Vishnu becomes the source of all religion, austerity and penance. Um, but Ropa describes that in the purport, we have to situate ourselves beyond the mode of goodness. We have to go beyond the three modes, including the mode of goodness, and come to the mode level of Shuddha Sattva, where we are detached from all the sort of pious and impious deeds, and our only attachment is in serving the Lord. Come to the last shloka of the day in text 41. Now, Agni Devta is praying. Um, Normally, when we see that any the most important part of a yajna or a sacrifice, we see is this uh, the havan kund that is made, um, and then there's the agni that's lit in the in the havan kund. So it is described that actually that havan kund is like the mouth of the, of Lord, and the flames of the agni that are there, they're like the tongues. You know how the tongue moves, the tongue, the flames are moving. That because they are the tongues of Lord Vishnu. And in that mouth and the tongue, we are offering all our oblations and we do swaha. So on behalf of uh, you know, Lord, Lord Vishnu, 
Agni Devta accepts all these things and offers it to Lord Vishnu. Um, and Prabhupada says that, you know, in this day and age, uh, it's so difficult to perform all these other yajyas, but what's recommended is, this quoting from the translate, from the purport, by offering worship and prasad daily, one becomes the best performer of yajya. So the way that we can do yajya is by, by uh, offering prayer and offering prasad daily um, to, to the Lord, to the Lordships, we can perform the best kind of yajya. Otherwise, whatever we do, uh, you know, that doesn't have any any much meaning in life, and does not, you know, if it's if it's devoid of Krishna, then it doesn't get us to much places. Um, usually, the material people in their daily activities and all, they I, they they don't have any conception of of God and what they do, and sometimes they can even create false gods uh, for that reason, but not understanding the higher principle of of the reason why we do things. Um, I remember like 10, 15 years ago, you know, there used to be a saying that, um, you know, cricket, cricket is our religion and Sachin is our God. Because people are so, so infatuated by, by that sport. Um, obviously now, now their God has become old. But one devotee from Chapati Temple, you know, when he heard this, he changed the aphorism uh, into uh, Sankirtan is our religion and Sachinandan is our God. Um, so in that way, you know, we connect everything we have uh, and use that in service of Krishna. Uh, in the last part of the purport, uh, this is the purport which you know, we recommend to be to be read today. The last part of the purport, Prabhupada says, Yajya Sankirtana Prayed Yajanti Hi Su Mehasa. That the best form of yajya in the age of Kali is Sankirtan Yajya, the loud chant, congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So Prabhupada describes that just as Lord Vishnu appeared in the sacrificial arena of, of, of Daksh Prajapati to satisfy all the assembled uh, wonderful uh, souls. Similarly, <clears throat> in Kalyu, Lord Chaitanya appears um, into this into this sort of into the sphere of Kalyu, and the way we offer him sacrifices to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. With this, I'll end my discussion for today. Um, Grantara Shri Mantvakatam Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnavandi Ki Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for a very wonderful class. Thank you to all devotees for joining the call. Shri Mantvakatam Ki Jai, Shri La Prabhupad Ki Jai, His Grace Chaitanya Chandra Das Prabhuji Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Let's send the call here, Hare Krishna.